Hello everyone, welcome to Incredible Study. Today, in this video, we discuss the reasonable questions of light chapter. All the reasonable questions of light chapter we discuss in this video. So, without getting delay, let's get going. Our first question here is convex lens is called a converging lens why so the answer here we have a convex lens converges the parallel rays of light at a point after refraction so it is called converging lens here you can see the example here is the example what it does is when the parallel rays of light come then the here convex lens converges all these parallel rays of light at a single point therefore this lens is called converging lens here we have next question a convex lens has a real focus why so the answer we have here the refracted rays from a convex lens actually meet at point so a convex lens has a real focus it means here we can see bulge at meter then when the parallel rays of light come then it converges all the light rays of light at a single point which is actual all the refracted rays meet at actual point so we can see convex lens has real focus now we have next question here it is dangerous to look through a convex lens at a sun or a bright light why so the answer we have a convex lens converges the parallel rays of light at a point increasing the temperature at that point if we look through a convex lens at the sun in a bright sunny day it can damage our eyes so it is dangerous to look through the convex lens at the sun or a bright light it means here you can see this is a convex lens and it converges all the parallel rays of light at a single point so when we look through the sun with this light then the light coming from the sun parallel light coming from the sun it converts to our eyes and when the rays of light of the sun get converged to our eye at a single point then the temperature at that point becomes very hot and our eye can be damaged our eye can be damaged so it is very dangerous to look with the convex lens to the bright light or sun here we have next question a convex lens is called diverging lens why so the answer we have a convex lens is also known as diverging lens because it diverges the parallel rays of light after refraction you can see here in figure also if not then i make you clear here here what happened this is our concave lens when the parallel rays of light goes through this lens then this lens diverges the parallel rays of light it means the refracted rays are diverged in this direction if these all are parallel rays then this concave lens diverges this parallel rays of light so this lens is called diverging lens now we go to our next question you can see here this is our next question and the question says a concave lens has a virtual focus why the answer we have the refracted rays from a concave lens appear to diverge from a single point when we produce them back they meet at a point which is virtual focus so a concave lens has a virtual focus it means here this is a concave lens and when parallel rays of light passes through this lens then the lens diverges these all rays in this direction and according to here when this refracted rays is extended then this all rays meet here at a single point which is focus but this focus is virtual focus this focus is virtual focus so we can say that a concave lens has a virtual focus here this is our next question and this question is very much important this question is frequently asked in examination the question here we have the power of lens is measured as a reciprocal of its focal length why so here the answer is a thick lens with short focal length 
has more ability to converge or diverge the light rays. But the thin lens with longer focal length has less ability to converge or diverge the light rays. It means that the power of lens with short focal length is more and vice versa. So, power of lens is measured as a reciprocal of length. It means we all know that this is a convex lens and it has more ability to converge or diverge the light rays. But this is concave lens and we all know that it has less ability to converge or diverge the light rays. Here we can see in convex lens, convex lens that convex lens has less focal length. When we see the focal length of convex lens, then we find it is small. But when we see the focal length of this concave lens, then we find it very much greater than that of convex lens. Suppose here we see when we take the focal length and when we draw this circle here imaginary circle then we get it has less focal length but when we draw the imaginary circle in the concave lens then we find it more it means here we can say that power is equal to 1 by f it means the relation between power and focal length is inverse the lens having less focal length has greater power or more power to converge or diverge the light rays but the lens of high focal length or longer focal length has less ability to converge or diverge the light rays. So, we can say that the power of a lens is measured reciprocal of its focal length. This is the proper explanation of this question. Here, this is our next question. The question says, we cannot see our surroundings clearly when we enter a dark room from a bright sun. but our vision improves after some time. Why? So, the answer we have, the size of pupil of our eyes is small in bright light. So, when we enter the dark room, very small amount of light enters into our eyes through the small pupil. As a result, we cannot see our surrounding clearly and after some time, the pupil of our eye expands and allows more light to pass through it. Therefore, we can see surrounding properly. Here I am going to explain this question. Here our question says that we cannot see in the dark room clearly when we come from bright light. So, in case of our eye, here suppose this is our eye, then the size of pupil is small in bright light. Why? The small size of pupil allows a small amount of light to enter in our eyes which helps to protect our eyes. It saves our eye from damage. And in case of dark light, when we enter in the room, then the size of pupil increases slowly. And when it increases, the sufficient amount of light can enter into the pupil or our eyes. So, it allows us to see clearly in dark room. But when we come from bright light, to dark room then size of pupil remain small for short period of time and in that short period of time it doesn't allow more light rays to pass in our eyes therefore we cannot see clearly in dark room when we come from bright light now we go to our next question here the next question we have we cannot see object placed at a distance of less than 25 centimeters why? So, the near point of the normal eye is 25 centimeter. Up to this distance, the eye shows its power of accommodation. Less than this distance, the ciliary muscles cannot make the eye lens bulge more. Therefore, we cannot see the objects placed at the distance of less than 25 centimeter. Here we explain the answer. Suppose this is the figure and this is the lens. And here ciliary muscles hold this lens in this way. The highest capacity of ciliary muscle to focus on the object is 25 centimeter and when the object is placed less than this 25 centimeter then the power of accommodation fails. It means the ciliary muscle fail to bulge the eye. This bulge the lens. It means bulge means what? To make 
fatter, broader. Ciliary muscles fails to make these islands broader. Since the islands cannot be broader further less than this 25 centimeter, it cannot focus on the object. It cannot focus on the object. So we cannot see the object placed less than 25 centimeter. This is the explanation of this answer. Now we move to our next question. This is our next question. And our question says, in case of an eye suffering from myopia, the refracted rays converge in front of retina to make image. Why? So the answer we have, the eye lens of the myopic eye is thick with less focal length. Ciliary muscles are unable to pull the lens to make the thin shape. So refracted rays converge in front of retina to make the image. Here the answer means suppose this is a lens of normal eye and the lens of myopic eye is quite broader or quite thicker than that of the normal eye lens. Since this is thicker ciliary muscle, this ciliary muscle fail to make it as normal. It means to make it thin. Since the ciliary muscle fail to make it thin, all the refracted rays converges in front of retina. Suppose this is eye and here this is a lens and this is retina this is retina when the light rays passes through this lens myopic lens then this light rays converges in front of retina here in front of retina in order to converge it here therefore in case of eye suffering from myopia the refracted rays converges in front of retina to make image the image is formed here this is our next question and our question says here the refracted rays converge behind the retina in case of an eye suffering from hypermetropia. Why? So before going to explain this answer, I am going to tell this hypermetropia and myopia and myopia is a disease, is a disease related to eye. Now we move to our answer. An eye suffering from long sightedness. Long sightedness means hypermetropia. Hypermetropia is also known as long sightedness, and myopia is also known as short sightedness. So, an eye suffering from long sightedness has longer focal length. Ciliary muscles are unable to compress the lens into thick shape. So, in case of this, the refracted rays converge behind retina. It means this is a normal eye lens. Suppose this is normal islands then the islands of the person suffering from hypermetropia is quite thinner than this normal islands and since this islands is thinner this ciliary muscle fail to bring it in its normal form suppose here this is a lens i then here is a retina and this is a thin lens Consider this is a thin lens. Then when the parallel rays of light passes through this lens, then this light of rays converges, converges here. Behind retina means behind retina. This is a retina. Therefore, in case of eye suffering from hypermetropia, the refracted rays converge behind the retina. Here we have completed our question answer or reasonable question. If any doubt, then ask in comment. Comment is fully free you can ask over there if you have any doubt regarding these all questions subscribe for more content